Well, finally, after months of watching ISIS tear apart Iraq and Syria, our commander in chief now says he has a strategy for taking down the terrorists. But critics are already questioning if that strategy will work. Some international allies are skeptical of the president after his indecisiveness in the Middle East for years. Dale Hurd has the story. President Obama has finally decided what the U.S. should do to defeat the terrorists of the so-called Islamic State in the Middle East. We are going to degrade and ultimately defeat ISIL the same way that we have gone after al-Qaeda. But on Meet the Press Sunday, the president I'm said he still believes the Islamic State is not an immediate threat to the United States and he won't send U.S. combat troops back to Iraq. I want everybody to understand that we have not seen any immediate intelligence about uh, threats to the homeland from ISIL. That's not what this is about. The president will begin laying out his strategy to congressional leaders today and then in a speech Wednesday on the eve of the anniversary of 9-11. Members of Congress were relieved but critical that the president took so long to form a strategy. Well, I want to congratulate the president. He is now on the offense. It is overdue, but the president is now there. There's been some confusion coming out of the administration. This is the toughest talk that we've heard from the president. And I, I agree with Senator Feinstein. That's a good thing uh, because they are a threat. And Senator and I see all this intelligence, and that's uh, very, been very, very concerning for us. It's Former Republican Iran, presidential Iran, candidate if Mitt Romney was not as charitable toward the president's slowness in crafting a strategy. Well, I, I think the president is really out of touch with reality when it comes to what's happening in the world. He is so out of touch with reality that he hasn't taken the kind of action necessary to prevent very bad things from happening. Meanwhile, in Cairo, the Arab League recognizes the threat of the Islamic State, urging members to confront the group militarily and politically. But so far, Arab countries have been skeptical of the president's policies and actions in the Middle East after seeing things like his indecisiveness in Syria. And like American political leaders, the Arab nations want specifics from the president before they'll sign on. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, it's not just Syria and not just Iraq. ISIS has also set its sights on lands far beyond what they now control. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. Here's John. Pat, that's right. ISIS has ambitions towards the country of Jordan, and beyond that, they could threaten Israel as well. Chris Mitchell brings us that story from northern Jordan. Jordan is a major tourist destination. Each year, millions of tourists flock to famous sites like Petra. I think Petra is amazing. I think it truly is one of the wonders of the world. But now Jordan finds itself on the front lines with IS, the Islamic State. This is the last major town in Jordan before you go to Iraq. This road leads straight to the border. And now on the other side, Sunni troops supported by ISIS control that crossing. The group's aggressive moves toward Jordan's border have many worried about the future of King Abdullah and Jordan, also known as the Hashemite Kingdom. In this video, Jordanians fighting for the Islamic State in Iraq tore up their passports and pledged to slaughter the king. From their point of view, Jordan's an artificial country. It has to be removed. Next stop is Israel. Looking at the map, Jordan shares a long border with both Syria and Iraq. You can also see Jordan serves as a buffer on Israel's eastern border. In the vast desert to the north, the Jordanians maintain a strong, well-armed and trained military. But Israeli analyst Jonathan Fine sees Jordan's real threat coming from the inside, not its border. The danger is embedded in the potential of Muslim Brotherhood supporters, among them also Palestinians, who might cling and adhere to the ideology of the IS in, uh, uh, in Iraq. Hopefully, Jordan won't face this enemy. It has two strong allies in the U.S. and Israel. I don't think that I'm... Uh, exaggerating that both Israel and the U.S. will prevent any takeover of IS on Jordan. Because from an Israeli point of view, the Eastern Front has always been a very sensitive issue. That's why Israel feels is vital to control the Jordan Valley on its eastern border. But the threat goes far beyond the borders of the Hashemite Kingdom. In their eyes, the definition of the enemy is Western civilization, not a foreign policy of one government or another. And when they say they, uh, uh, they target the Judeo-Crusade alliance as their major enemy, they mean what they're saying. 
For now, Jordan, usually a quiet political player, sits on the front lines, part of the new reality in an ever-changing Middle East. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Northern Jordan. Back here at home, President Obama faces harsh criticism over his decision to not take executive action on immigration until after the midterm elections. He's taking heat from both liberals and conservatives, as well as supporters of immigration reform. The president said on Meet the Press that he didn't make his decision because it would hurt Democrats who are facing difficult re-election campaigns in the Senate. Instead, he said that it was this summer's refugee crisis at the border that caused the delay. But liberals and immigration reform advocates say the president broke his promise to act before the end of summer. And conservatives say the president is overreaching his presidential authority again, arguing he doesn't have the power to change immigration laws by himself. Well, the IRS says it has lost still more emails, this time from five more employees who are also part of the congressional investigations into the Tea Party scandal. The tax agency said in June it couldn't find an untold number of emails to and from Lois Lerner, the former agency official who's refused to testify to Congress about the scandal. The IRS blamed computer crashes for the latest lost emails and says it hasn't found any evidence that anyone deliberately destroyed them. Truett Cathy, the founder of the Chick-fil-A restaurant chain, passed away early this morning. A company spokesman said Cathy died at home surrounded by family members. The first Chick-fil-A opened in Atlanta, Georgia back in 1967, and in the following decades, it expanded to more than 1,800 stores in 39 states. The chain has been known for its biblical values like closing on Sundays to allow employees a day of rest, and Kathy was known for his Christian beliefs as well, appearing on the 700 Club in years past. In recent years, Chick-fil-A drew attention over comments on gay marriage. Truett Kathy was 93. And Pat Truett was not only known for his business success, he was also known for his charitable works. I was a wonderful man, very generous, and uh, he appeared a couple of times on the 700 Club in the early days, and he was just getting started, and he talked about the idea of taking a piece of white meat chicken and putting it in a bun, and that was the foundation of, quote, Chick-fil-A. His son was joking about the fact that his father wanted to live to be 100 because so few people died who were over 100, and uh, so he, he, was a, he was a joker. But a great Christian, a wonderful man, and he will be sorely missed, uh, not because of his business success, because he was just a great human being who loved the Lord Jesus. John? Pat, still another near miss for Earth as an asteroid 60 feet in diameter passed by on Sunday, only 25,000 miles away. But other space rocks have come even closer, with some crashing down to Earth, like the meteor that landed in Russia last February. If the asteroid that passed by this weekend had instead struck the Earth, it could have caused a major disaster because, Pat, it could have released about 30 times the amount of energy from the bomb that was dropped over Hiroshima in World War II. Well, it's just a little hunk of rock. That's all it is. It's just a little hunk of space rock, and there are millions of them floating around in space, and we just don't know when. The good news is that Jupiter's out there, big uh, gravity field, which sucks these things up closer to it, spares the Earth serious strikes. We've been blessed and protected, but nevertheless, uh, we're vulnerable. I mean, it's a shooting gallery out there in space, and, and we're one of the targets. So uh, occasionally those things hit. The one that wiped out the dinosaurs hit to what maybe, what was it, 250 million years ago? No, 65 million years, excuse me, <clears throat> 65 million years ago. And um, it extinguished the dinosaurs. And who knows what it could do if it hit again. So let's just hope and pray that the Lord will be merciful. Churches and groups of different denominations in Utah want the Supreme Court to settle whether states can outlaw gay marriage. Evangelical, Catholic, and Mormon religious groups are asking the high court to uphold religious freedom. A statement from them says, the time has come to end the divisive national debate as to whether the Constitution mandates same-sex marriage. Well, CBN provided immediate disaster relief after an earthquake struck a remote area in China earlier last month. The 6.1 magnitude earthquake left hundreds of people homeless and unable to keep warm during the cold village nights. CBN teamed up with the local government to get access to the disaster area and also worked with a local church to hand out beds and quilts to 2,500 people in need. 
Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by logging on to CBN.com international.